Hello, and welcome to another episode of The Naked Turner. Today I'm going to be turning a piece of walnut given to me by my friend Mark Bade. And he uh, was gracious enough to give me this large chunk of walnut, and uh, I'm going to try go at turning another piece out of it. I have um, turned a bowl from it, which I still have not yet to give to him, but uh, as soon as we get a chance to see each other again, I'll be gifting him the bowl that I turned for him. Um, this piece, let me pan over here. So this piece of walnut, what I'm going to end up with is something around probably five and a quarter inches. Yeah, right around five and a quarter inches tall. And it's about the same width. So what I'm going to try to do is turn a piece that's kind of rounded on the top with a small entry hollow form hole maybe like inch and a half, two inch hole on the top, and then a nice soft urn style shape. Um, so I've got this sort of roughed in. I did notice there is a big split right here. Um, this walnut is, there's a lot of splits in it, but what I'm going to try to do is turn away the outer edge. Before Always remember to read, understand, and follow all safety procedures for any tool that you're going to be using. And don't forget, eye safety. Uh, and face safety. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do now is just start working on curving this outer edge, working on the outside shape of this vessel. I have this mounted to a faceplate with six very strong SDS lag bolts. And uh, that is something that Lyle Jameson has suggested, that anytime you're doing hollow forms, uh, eliminate the potential of vibration from your scrolling jaw chuck by anchoring very firmly, either directly to the piece you're turning or to a glue block that then is glue blocked to your piece. Uh, here a little bit. Alright, so now I've uh, drilled a depth hole using my Forsner bit um, down to about three quarters of an inch from the bottom of this vessel. And that will allow me to get in and hollow out this vessel uh, more efficiently. Um, I do have a couple little splits here. I've stabilized this one, but once I start doing some uh, hollowing in here, I'm going to hollow down to about this point, and I'm going to refine the bottom shape of this a little bit more, then I'll continue hollowing all the way in. The reason I'm doing that is to keep a little more meat down here on the bottom so I get less vibration. Uh, this is all part of what um, some of the things that Lyle talks about on his website. So if you get a chance, go to lylejameson.com and uh, he explains more in depth all these different, um, different ways of doing things here in order to have a more successful turning for hollow forms. Uh, I'm going to get his system set up now, and then we'll get to hollowing. Okay, here it is set up. Safety gear's on. My laser's pointing about 3 16 of an inch from the head of my cutter. And I can come in here now and start my hollowing process. I'm going to move this back just a hair. right in there. I can start refining the outer shape and then move my way down on the inside. Alright, so now I'm going to refine this outer shape here a little bit. I'm just going to narrow it a tiny bit and I have one little bit of a flat spot right in here that I'm just going to sort of bring in at this point.
Okay, I'm just going to show you a little bit of the laser here on this side. I've got the outside edge now defined. My foot is on and I'm real happy with the shape. Now I'm going to go in here and as you saw that, I started this up with the tool inside the vessel. Now I would never do that holding that freehand, but because of the fact that this, first of all, the lathe is running real smooth, the piece is running real smooth, I have my laser pointer guiding me, and so as soon as my laser pointer is right at the outer edge of my piece, I know I've achieved the desired wall thickness, to which right now is about 3 sixteenths of an inch. inside there'll be a little bit of feathering to do inside of there but uh, that just kind of shows you how easy it is once that laser gets to right there where it's just disappearing and I see it down here on my lathe bed I know that's as far as I need to go sorry about the lighting here but I'm shooting outside and I don't have a great fill light here for the front but it is helping you see the laser so uh, it's a bonus all right I have uh, this hollowed out to the desired depth and everything's feeling really good. A little more sanding to do just up here inside of the very lip. And to do that, I already, I already used this stick here with sandpaper on it to get up in here and sand in there. And now I'm just gonna sand right here around the, the inside edge of this lip. Putting some sanding sealer on this now. Shellac and denatured alcohol 50 50. And it's all stabilized and sealed up and now sanding sealed. And there's a couple more little cracks out here around the rim, but I think they're going to be okay. So I'm going to put a couple coats of this sanding sealer on inside and outside. And then I'll do some wet sanding with walnut oil and uh, part this thing off. And I'll show you some pictures of the finished product if everything turns out well. Thanks again for watching another episode of The Naked Turner. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and a like. Share. If you're not a subscriber, please click subscribe and become a subscriber. And if you are a subscriber, Thank you so much for your continued support with regard to my channel. And uh, Mark, I really like this piece of walnut. It's got some beautiful color in it, some nice grain. And uh, hopefully in a few minutes I'll have this parted off here and I'll post some still images. Thanks again for watching. Safe turning. Okay, so here it is. Several coats of finish on it. It feels so nice and soft and smooth. Um, and now what I'm going to do is part this piece off, bringing in my tool rest and a little below center for this particular diamond parting tool. Finish the bottom with some hand sanding, but uh, there it is. I'll take some still images of this and uh, post them at the end. And like I said, if you enjoyed the video, please give me a like and share and become a subscriber if you're not already. Thanks again. Safe turning. Hello. Welcome once again to another episode of The Naked Turner. Today I'm going to be turning a piece of wood that was sent to me by a subscriber by the name of Clyde. Um, Clyde sent me this piece of Arizona or, uh, desert iron wood which uh, I w grew up in the desert down in Tucson and um, have experienced just how dense ironwood is uh, being a kid. So when I received this box of ironwood, I was uh, brought back to my childhood and I want to thank you, Clyde, for sending me these pieces of ironwood. Um, one of these chunks is relatively large. It does look like it has a ring shake in it or a ring check. Um, so I'm trying to stabilize that right now. And um, once I have it stabilized, I'm going to try to see which way I want to orient it on the lathe to make sure that I have the best use of this piece of wood. And it is so dense, hence the name ironwood. Very, very dense wood. 
it's going to be a real challenge on my tools uh, in order to turn this into something. And because of the fact that I have never turned any of this before, it will also uh, just be an interesting process to see if it's something that I can actually turn and get anything out of. So without further ado, let's get started turning. But always remember to read, follow, and understand all the shop safety for any tool that you're going to be using. And keep up with your maintenance, check things uh, on the tool to make sure that nothing has vibrated itself loose or is a potential threat for injury. Thanks for watching and uh, let's get over to the lathe. Okay, so when I got home from work uh, the other day, Thursday, this uh, package was here from Clyde and um, he sent this ironwood to me from Kansas and uh, um, it is desert ironwood, and there's a pretty good size ring shake right here, uh, maybe about six inches out from where the pith used to be on this piece. Uh, this particular piece of ironwood experienced something that made it get a pretty good ring shake in it. So I'm trying to stabilize that a little bit, and as I turn it away, I'll see how much penetration I got with my epoxy here and see if that actually... Uh, got down in there. It is a thin penetrating, um, so I think it should get in there and hopefully seal up. Um, this piece right here looks really pretty. There's a lot, this stuff has a lot of checking, a lot of checking all throughout it. Um, so I'm not sure. This piece here, there's some bug, uh, bug tunneling in here. Um, and then there's a bunch of checking in the end grain down here, so I'm not sure. Uh, how well this is going to turn or work, but I'm going to do my best to see if I can get something out of it. The next thing I'll do after this is set up is I think um, it looks to me like the best use of this piece is going to be almost like that, but I don't want to turn it like that because all the grain's running this way, so i got to look at it and I'm feeling kind of like I'm feeling kind of like maybe this would be my bottom this would be my top, even though it would be better to go the other direction. This piece also, it has checking all throughout it, and um, it looks like a bug entry maybe over here, so we'll see what happens. Uh, I'll see if I get anything out of it, but it sure looks like it's going to be beautiful. Okay, so I've chopped some of the irregularity off this and created a flat face for me to anchor this. The problem is it was so tapered and there's so many pieces missing. Um, that I'm not sure, I'm just kind of trying to center it best I can on these narrowest points. Okay, so I realized after putting on the uh, faceplate that I hadn't uh, thought about the balancing of this piece, and it is such a wacky piece with lots of hard wood and then some of soft wood over here, and then it's a little irregular and out of balance. So I'm putting it here between centers and trying to identify the balance point. And I'm getting closer, but it's still a little bit heavy right there. So I'm moving this and just very lightly. Okay, so it's still get this really well locked off and pressurized, locking my quill and. Oh yeah, much, much better. There we go. I couldn't even get it up to 300 before. Now I'm running it over 1,000. So uh, that's a really good way to do this. This is something that I saw on Lyle Jameson's um, website. He showed uh, getting your piece weight-centered, not necessarily uh, object-centered, but weight-centered. And that definitely helped me. I was only able to get up to about 380 before on my RPM before my lathe started popping around a lot. Now I'm up over a thousand. I could let's let's actually check and see what I can get up to here, where I still feel comfortable. So there I am up at 1500, which is way fast enough to start roughing this piece in. So uh, amazing, and it feels like I could keep going. It's very, very balanced now. I hardly have any vibration. So, turning down. I'm going to start up here around 1100 RPM. Okay, shutting down. 
on and getting everything. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm sharpened up. Let's see how this cuts. A little better. Okay, so you see right here, running all up around here, all the way up into here, then it kind of stops there. So there is a fairly good six and a half or so inch long uh, ring shake in this piece. Uh, the grain looks incredible. I'm hoping that I get to keep a little bit of the, this uh, white um, area and then uh, this vaulting looks like it's going to be real interesting. So anyway, let's keep turning here, get this thing shaped. Alright, so I don't know when my camera shut down there, but anyway, uh, here we go. Coming back in, another finish pass here. Well, more of a finishing path, I should say. So let me show you what I was doing here. Coming in. And squaring off this space. Okay. Okay, I'm starting to see a shape that I'm going to do, and it's going to roll in from here. Trying to shape this a little more here.
right, so I just wiped this down with denatured alcohol, um, and I put a couple thin coats of uh, thin CA glue on the surface of this to try to kind of help seal up some of these splits and cracks and some of this softer spalted wood here and also the ring shank or ring shake here um, and seal the end grain pores as well and then I just did a little sanding up to 400 grit. Got to do a little more sanding right here and then I'll probably apply another layer of the thin CA glue. If you're using CA glue uh, really make sure you're in a well ventilated area. I am outside and I have a fan blowing the smell away from me. Do not get these fumes in your eyes. They are really bad for your eyes. So the grain <clears throat> on this piece is pretty incredible. There's some of the uh, cam uh, cambrium, I think it's called, the outer edge, the light part before you get into the actual wood. Um, and then this it's got just some stunning grain in it. It's going to be on fire once it's out in the sunlight. So hopefully this piece turns out okay. This ring shake is really making me a little nervous because it looks like this whole piece right out here could just fly off. So I'm doing another coat of thin CA to try to just kind of bond everything together real well and seal up all the end grain. And I'll show you that process right now clean rag and then what I do is get this rag nice and straight edge on it like this and now turning the lathe on slow putting my rag on and touching down the thin CA see the grain on that. So anyway, that's kind of my sanding sealer on this one. I'm using this as a sanding sealer. Then I will sand this down again. Um, and then what I'll be doing is applying my friction rub finish over the top of this CA uh, sanding sealer. And I should get a real nice smooth finish out of this. Already I'm up at 400 and it just feels like it's so nice and soft. It's beautiful. So this is pretty much dry already, and just make sure, yeah, that is kicked off already, so um, that's ready to go. I'm going to do some sanding on it, and then I'll apply some finish to the outside, and then I'll start hollowing the inside. Alright, so here it is, and I think I'm getting a, a really one of the best finishes that I've ever gotten. First of all, this iron was really hard, so of course, hard woods lend themselves to polishing better. Uh, but the spalted areas in this, there are still a few little funny holes in them. So what I did was I took a little bit of Tripoli, heated it up, polished it in on a rag, um, and then applied some more friction rub finish. And it's really getting a nice level polish here now. Okay, so I have this piece turned around and mounted up on my scrolling draw chuck uh, and I have some tilt stock pressure on. Um, this ring check is still making me a little bit nervous. I feel that it, it kind of feels almost like it's moving a little bit still. So um, I'm just going to go real easy here. I'm going to try to stay out of the line of fire uh, if this piece does explode off of here so uh, hopefully it won't but no guarantees okay I'm all sharpened up here and uh, ready to get turning 
Okay, my battery just went out there somewhere, but anyway, I was starting a little bit of hollowing, and now I'm going to drill uh, with a Forstner bit a depth hole. Okay, I'm gonna try this some more here. My uh, card was filling up, so I'm not sure where it left off the recording there. But uh, anyway, a little more hollowing here. Okay, so I've got the hollowing tool set up now, and I'm going to start hollowing this. Well, I'm going to finish hollowing this, I should say. Onto a 
rag here, rubbing it on. 